Welcome back to The Legal Brief, the show where we crush the various legal myths and misinformation surrounding various areas of the gun world. I'm your host, Adam Kraut, and today we're talking about H.R. 7115, a proposed bill that would ban the sale of 80% receivers, full parts kits, and could bring the home-built gun market to a halt. SB Tactical, the originator of the pistol stabilizing brace, set the bar for innovation and product development in the PDW pistol category. From the insanely popular SBM4 to the adjustable SBA3 and even kits for pump action firearms, SB Tactical braces are available for a wide variety of firearm platforms in fixed, adjustable, and side folding models. To get 15% off your legally transported and carried pistol braces, use the code TGC15 over at sb-tactical.com. At the beginning of November, Representative Frank Pallone Jr. of New Jersey introduced H.R. 7115, the 3D Firearms Prohibition Act. The bill's name is a bit of a misnomer as the title would lead you to believe it involves 3D printed firearms. I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is that the bill does not mention 3D printed firearms at all. The bad news is that since all firearms are three-dimensional, it covers more than any of us would like. Fear not, your two-dimensional guns won't be impacted. The proposed bill would impose three changes. First, section two of the bill, which is comically called the do-it-yourself assault weapons ban, would classify unfinished firearms, receivers, or frames, commonly referred to as 80% receivers, which are not firearms as defined by the Gun Control Act, along with assault weapon and machine gun parts kits as banned hazardous products under the Consumer Product Safety Act. Now, we need to talk about a few definitions here. The term assault weapons parts kit is defined as any part or combination of parts designed and intended to enable a consumer who possesses all such necessary parts to assemble a semi-automatic assault weapon. Likewise, the term machine gun parts kit is defined as any part or combination of parts designed and intended to enable a consumer who possesses all such necessary parts to assemble a machine gun or convert a firearm into a machine gun. Easy enough, right? Well, unfortunately, that's not all. A semi-automatic assault weapon is defined to include a semi-automatic rifle or a semi-automatic shotgun that has the capacity to accept a detachable ammunition feeding device. Semi-automatic firearms and shotguns are defined in a similar manner, that being they use the energy from a fired cartridge or case to extract and chamber the next round. The term also includes a semi-automatic pistol that has the capacity to accept detachable ammunition feeding devices and any one of the following. 1. An ammunition magazine that attaches to the pistol outside of the pistol grip. 2. A threaded barrel capable of accepting a barrel extender. 3. Flash suppressor, forward hand grip, or silencer. 3. A shroud that is attached to, or partially, or completely encircles the barrel, and that permits the shooter to hold the firearm with the non-trigger hand without being burned. 4. A second hand grip. 5. A manufactured weight of 50 ounces or more when the pistol is unloaded. And 6. A semi-automatic version of an automatic firearm. Now, a product banned under the Consumer Product Safety Act cannot be sold or offered for sale in the United States. In short, you'd be saying goodbye to any 80% receivers on the market. You know, because solid chunks of aluminum or plastic are super dangerous and must be stopped. The next section would make it unlawful to market or advertise on any medium of electronic communications, including over the internet for the sale of 80% receivers, along with assault weapon and machine gun parts kits. A violation would be treated as a violation of a rule defining an unfair or deceptive act or practice by the Federal Trade Commission's Act. Lastly, the bill would require homemade firearms have serial numbers. Currently, if you build your own Title I firearm, there's no requirement that you mark it at all. NFA firearms are different in this. Anyone who's 18 years or older and desires to make a firearm or obtain a unique serial number or other identifying mark for a firearm may request a licensed dealer to issue one. The request will have to describe the firearm involved and state whether that firearm will be or is a handgun. Here's the part where it gets a little nutty. Yeah, that other stuff was normal. Any request shall be treated as a proposed transfer of a firearm from the licensed dealer to the applicant, except that the firearm's transaction record, or 4473, involved shall indicate 
that what's being transferred is a serial number and not a firearm. That means a background check will have to be performed. Assuming you pass, the dealer could then issue a serial number to you. Oh yeah, and it would be unlawful to make the firearm before you have a serial number assigned. Even better, within 90 days of obtaining a serial number and identifying mark for a firearm, the firearm must be presented to the dealer who issued that serial number and identifying mark. They then are going to be required to verify the serial number has been stamped on or otherwise permanently affixed to the firearm, and that the firearm matches the description provided when the request for the serial number and identifying mark was made. Lastly, the proposed bill would generally ban the possession of a firearm made after 1968 by an individual unless it had a serial number on it. So, this bill would generally ban the advertising and sale of 80% receivers, along with assault weapon and machine gun parts kits. While we were discussing this topic, John expressed concern as to how this would affect TGC if this were to pass as written. I told him that a ban is a ban, and since you couldn't sell or advertise any 80% receivers or parts kits, that he wouldn't be able to get any, like everyone else. Based on the language, it would seemingly impact the ability of people to purchase parts for guns or receivers they already have. This would clearly present issues and what would hopefully be widespread opposition to this bill if there wasn't enough already. On top of that, it would require that any homemade firearms have serial numbers. Of course, you couldn't just make up your own, it would have to be issued by a dealer who would then have to conduct a background check in order to give you one. Which begs the question why you'd want to make your own firearm in the first place. There is some good news if you will. This term of Congress is set to expire on January 3rd, 2019, and that means if this bill isn't passed by both chambers, it's going to die and have to be reintroduced. While it's unlikely that it will get anywhere with a Republican majority in the Senate for the next congressional term, it's not something you're going to want to remain silent on if it is reintroduced. And look out for a watered-down version that seems more reasonable. That's it for this episode. If you learned anything from the show, help us out and hit that like button. Make sure you share it with your friends. Don't forget to get subscribed, and if you enjoyed the video, consider supporting us via the links down in the video description. Be sure to check out the Gun Collective podcast on iTunes, and as always, thanks for watching. What do you want my face to do? <laughs> we need outtakes. <laughs> I don't know, is it? Gas-powered? <laughs> oh, well, what's a non-gas-powered circular saw? At the beginning of no- That was really good for not reading that before. <laughs> and it all goes downhill from here. Frank Pallone Jr. of New Jersey. New Jersey. I'm, yeah, I remember. And that was me just being an idiot. The bill's name is a bit of myth. The bill's name is a bit of miss. Bit of a- Bit of a- <clears throat> Yes. Because- <clears throat> <sighs> Woo! The shirts worn in today's video on The Gun Collective have been provided by Patriot Patch. Closed captions have also been brought to you by Patriot Patch Company. Be sure to click the link in the video description to check out all of their great products, including their cleaning mats.